Hello everyone, I am Naval Yamul. Welcome back to my YouTube channel Data Master and welcome to our playlist on Microsoft Fabric. In this video, we are going to discuss about the task flows in Microsoft Fabric. In our previous videos, we discussed about the introduction to the Microsoft Fabric, how to create a workspace in the Microsoft Fabric, and we discussed about the UI, how your workspace is divided into two sections and i have given you a short introduction on the task flow in this video we are going to go deep dive into the task flow i'm going to show you a few examples of how the task flows can be created so let us look at the overview so i'm showing you the official documentation of the microsoft fabric task flow i'll be giving you the link of this in the description so fabric task flow is the workspace feature that enables you to build a visual of the flow you can see this uh, example like it helps you to build a visual of the flow of the work in the workspace so it is one of the feature in the workspace that will help you to organize all the items and it will also show you how your project is flowing so that's the reason why it's a task flow okay you can just go and go deep dive into the documentation but let me show you the hands on in our previous video we discussed about how to create a workspace and if you remember i created a workspace called data master youtube and now i'm going to talk about the task flow and inside the workspace if you look the window is divided into two sections horizontally one is your task flow and the second one is your items so we created one folder as a day one in it now i'm talking about the task flow here so you can create your own task manually you can try clicking on this add a new task or you can select a pre-designed task flow so let us try to use the pre-designed task flow so it is again pre-designed from the microsoft and they try to recommend this so once you click on it you can see there are nine tasks now so maybe in future they'll definitely add this so we have a general we have a basic data analytics and for data analytics using a sql analytics endpoint your medallion architecture a task flow for the event analytics for your lambda for your sensitive data for your basic basic machine learning models so if i try to click on any one of it for example let us look at the basic data analytics so a task flow would be created in that task flow it will show you what all workloads you need for example you need a data factory experience we need a data warehouse experience and if you're talking about your real-time intelligence power bi we need these all workloads or you can simply call it as an experiences within each experience or within each workload you will find the items related to, to that workload for example if you take a data factory as an experience in that we can use an items called data pipelines data flow gen 2 and so on if you're talking about power bi we have a report we have a dashboard items within that if you are talking about data warehousing we have a warehouse and so on so this will give you a clear idea like okay if i want to do a basic data analytics i need these all workloads and these items it's not mandatory to use these all this is just a concept this is just a pre-designed task flow you can edit that also so i am taking the basic data analytics and let me hit on select wow the moment you click on select you can see you got a task flow which has divided in four sections first one is saying that okay collect the data or you can get the data from the various external sources and you try storing that data so when it's storing a data you can use a lake house you can use a warehouse depending upon how or what is the type of your data if it is structured data we use warehouse to store the data if it is semi-structured unstructured we use a lake house if you have a huge amount of data again we try to use a lake house for that on top of the or once you try storing the data then we try 
creating a visuals on top of it and then we try to track them so this is our workflow or your workflow task looks something like this so we it includes four tasks you can edit that you can edit it you can try changing the name you can try doing all these things let me talk about one of the let us look at this collect data in this we have new items so let me let me click on this new item small icon cool so in this collect data as one of the task one of the task we can add the items like okay i want a data flow gen 2 i want a data pipeline so data pipelines is nothing but the same experience we have used in azure data factory so people those who are completely new to it don't worry i'll go deep dive into what is data pipelines i'll explain it and people those who have used my uh, power bi power query so the power query is was available only in the microsoft uh, power bi desktop version and if you use a power bi service we could not get a power query but now we get a power query that is nothing but a data flow gen 2 so these two are low code no code tool that helps you to extract the data even it helps you to transform the data and then load the data so basically all the data engineering workload extraction transformation and then storing can be done by using these two items depending on the use case depending upon what the data volume is what the data type is we can choose the data flow gen 2 or a data pipeline you can to take any two for the items in the uh, in the data collect task okay you can say data collect star we have few more tasks here so let me do one thing let me take data pipeline so i'll just click on pipeline and the moment you click on pipeline it's trying to create a new item and it will assign it to the particular task so i'll just say pipeline one i'll try to create it i'll try to create it and it takes few minutes and wow you can see it is taking me inside a pipeline it is taking me inside a pipeline yeah the ui looks something like this it says uh, build a data pipeline to organize and move your data we can create a pipeline activity it's a really low code no code tool you can get uh, data from various sources into the one lake it can be a warehouse it can be a lake house as i have discussed it you can use a copy data activity here you can use a practice with some sample data you can use some templates here we have few details i'm going to talk about all the tabs in the next video when we talk about the data pipelines in microsoft fabric now let me do one thing let me go back i can do that by just clicking on the workspace yeah cool and you can see the moment i clicked on the pipeline i mean i am using a pipeline to collect the data so let us imagine that we have various different sources i'm going to extract all the data from there so for that i need an item so this is a pipeline okay you can drag and drop it into the different folders here not to worry so let me click on store data so when it comes to store data what items we can pick from here for that let me click on new item and wow once you click on new item you can see here we have a lot of different items you can choose from we have a lake house we have a warehouse so lake house is nothing but those who are completely new for them a lake house is nothing but it is a combination of your data warehouse and your data lakes data lakes helps you to store the data in uh, all formats structure semi-structure and structure data and when it comes to asset transactions your data lakes do not support or it does not have a very strong support whereas your warehouses have a very strong support for the asset transaction so it is a combination of both data warehouse data warehouse and the data lake so you can store it into the lake house you can take a warehouses so the use case here is if you are talking about structured data i have a structured data and i want to query that i want to write a queries then warehouse is the best option and if you're saying that i'll be writing a PySpa code i'll be writing a pandas code for doing a transformation i have a huge amount of data it can be a json file parquet file or you are talking about csv files semi-structured data you have pdfs then lakehouse is the best option so depending on the use case you can go for lakehouse or you can switch it to the warehouses 
so i'll be using a lake house now okay so once i click on the lake house a new item will be created and that item will be assigned to the task called store data so let me just hit on the lake house and here i'll give a name uh, for example uh, sample lake house we will be talking about in detail about the lake house a data pipeline how to start how to create the items and so on so once you create a lake house it looks something like this where you have the lake house explorer on the left we it is divided into two sections one is tables and the files so tables again it stores all the structured data which has rows and columns then you have a files where you can store any kind of data in it like a you can create a folders within that you can store structure semi structured csv json parquets and all those things so how do we get the data into these files or how do we create a tables out of it so we have again a lot of options in this lake house we can start uploading the files locally i mean manually you can do it from this machine or you can get the sample data so we will be using a sample data first and then we are going to talk about our own use cases then we have a shortcut so in microsoft if you are using microsoft laptops or you are i'm talk, generally talking about os your windows os we have a shortcut so the concept is same again so if you have the external data maybe in your google storage or maybe in your uh, s3 or your adls so you can create a shortcut in the microsoft fabric by using this feature it's really an amazing feature all your data resides in the local i mean it resides in your storage only we are just creating a shortcut and once we create a shortcut we can start querying the data in the fabric so that is new shortcut we will talk about that then we have a data flow gen 2 we have a data pipelines and so on see we were talking about the task in the task i created one item called a lake house to store the data to store the data in a lake house so i use that let me go back to my workspace yeah so every time to go back i use this workspace and you can see here in the workspace it is so amazing i have added one item in the collect data that is pipeline and you can see that oh cool pipeline it's a data pipeline type and the task is collect data it looks awesome now when you look at the lake house yeah the lake house name was a sample lake house it's a lake house and it's a item of the task store data if you have been looking at carefully we have created a lake house but with the lake house we got two more items in it you can see here so whenever you are creating a lake house by default you get one semantic model and you get one sql endpoint or you can simply call it as a sql analytics endpoint this is by default it is created by your workspace name you can see this is your workspace name in our case it's a data master youtube so these two are by default created by the workspace and i have created the lake house now as a beginners you might be confused like okay you are creating a lake house but why we are getting a semantic model and why we are getting a sql analytics endpoint so i'll just put a question mark here because when we talk about a lake house we are going to create a separate video on lake house in microsoft fabric there i'm going to discuss in detail why or why there is a need of this semantic model default what we can do it with the semantic model and what is a sql analytics endpoint what we can do with this so we are going to discuss about that in the lake house session but now remember we have these two things now we have a third task called create visual and create visual is like okay just try to understand we are talking about data analytics project we are extracting the data from various sources we stored them into one place called as a lake house and then we are going to create a report out of it yeah to create a report visualization power bi is the best tool so let me just click on this and cool you can see we got a report it's a power bi report or you can go with the dashboard we have other items also we will discuss about that let me just hit on create a report and the moment it, uh, it 
asking you the semantic model oh i want to create a report based on which model what is a model now so if you remember i had told you when you created a lake house a model is created now what i'll do okay i'll be using a sample lake house and the location is your data master youtube i'll try to click on create a auto report there is no data at all there is no data so it could not work it simply says that there is no model schema so it could not create any report out of it but just i'm going to show you how the task flow looks like you can see there is one report created so it takes few seconds let us wait or maybe i can just go back to my workspace i can see uh, we got a ui of the power bi but there's no data so that's the reason why we could not create any report out of it so let me go back uh, so there was no uh, item that got created because there was no model or there was no data into this semantic model then finally we have a uh, finally we have a task called as a track data you can add an item called uh, event house you can use uh, activators like to monitor your data set to monitor your queries or your stream and to trigger an action and alerts we use this activator or we can use a scorecard also as one of the item into that task okay so once we understand all the theoretical part once we understand the ui part we are going to work on end-to-end -end project where i'll be collecting the data from various sources we store them into the lake house we will be using a medallion architecture in it moving our data from bronze to silver to the gold and we are going to store our gold layer or the gold zone into the warehouses we'll try to uh, query them and then try to create a report and track the data so we are going to do the hands-on on each and every item each and every experiences in detail the only request is stay tuned subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so when i upload a new video on microsoft fabric you will get a quick notification and you will be the first person to check my videos so this was one of the example of the task flow that helps you to organize all your items and it helps you to check how your data project flow is moving on yes i told you that you can edit it so you can edit the task you can edit the description you can add a new task here you can add it add a general you can add different uh, task inside this so we have used a predefined or pre-designed task flow and we have picked only one task flow that was a uh, uh, basic data analytics but there are many other task flows you can try on that okay i hope you enjoyed this video you got something on the microsoft fabric task flows and we created a few items within each of the task thank you for watching this video hope you enjoyed see you in the next video bye bye